everybody. And welcome to Studland Bay in Dorset. We've come to explore Old Hairy Rocks, which are free chalk formations, and it's actually the easternmost point of the Jurassic Coast. So we've parked at the National Trust car park at Studland Bay, and we're going to walk, it's probably going to be about an hour's walk out to the rocks. Yeah, and... we're walking through the beach currently. I don't think I've ever come to the beach in full hiking gear, but no. we're rocking it. It's going to be good, good little walk. We're going to hopefully try and get the drone out, because that was one of the things we were frustrated about with the golden cat video, was that we couldn't get the yeah. drone out. <laughs> It's so windy! <laughs> so hopefully the winds is a little bit less today, so hopefully we can get the drone out and, and get some cool shots for you guys. Yeah, but let's go. So Old Harry Rocks are a set of three chalk formations which mark the easternmost point of the Jurassic Coast. Old Harry Rocks and the Needles on the Isle of Wight actually used to be connected by a long stretch of chalk, but due to erosion by the wind and sea, only these disconnected stacks remain. Old Harry is the name given to one of the stacks at Old Harry's Rocks. Old Harry actually used to have a wife, Old Harry's wife, but due to constant erosion, this stack actually collapsed and is now the stump that you see next to Old Harry. So obviously there are some interesting stories about the origin of the name Old Harry. One legend suggests that the devil, who is sometimes referred to as Old Harry, once slept on these rocks and they are therefore named after him. Another one says that they are named after the infamous pirate Harry Pay, who used to operate around these stacks. And then the final legend suggests that a Viking grave was halted here by a storm and that one of the Vikings who drowned in the wreckage called Earl Harold was actually turned into one of these chalk pillars. So comment below which legend do you think is the most likely? It's a video. Hmm. Wow. This place is Stunning. I could not stop taking photos. Yeah, I can't recommend coming here enough. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Like the white on the blue helps that it's a, a gorgeous day. But I know, we're incredibly lucky today. No, definitely recommend coming here if you're on your way down south. So now we're just going to head back towards the car. Uh, we're going to just do a little circular walk again, like we always like to do a little circle walk. And then we're going to be heading over towards Dirtle Door, which yes. is another iconic location on the south coast here.
welcome to the Dodo, guys. So Dildo is another really popular spot on the Jurassic Coast. We knew straight away it was because when we got here it was super busy. Yeah, well it was the middle of the day, so obviously. Yeah. yeah, really interesting place. After years and years of erosion from the ocean and the wind, it's just created this nice natural arch. And the name actually derives from the Old English word furl, which means to pierce or to bore, which you can kind of relate to when you look at the, the massive hole in between the rocks there. <laughs> So now we're just going to head from Dildor and we're going to try and do a little circular walk all the way up to Lulworth Cove and then back round to the car again. Okay, we've done the short walk across from Dirtle Door, literally maybe a kilometre. Yeah, but it's pretty steep coming down, yeah. so I'm not looking forward to going back up again. <laughs> but as you can see behind us, we're at Stair Hole, which you get, you get to just before Lulworth Cove. And Stair Hole is actually an infant cove, so it's kind of like a cove in the making. It's being eroded away over time. Yeah. This would have been how Lulworth Cove would have, would have started. So Lulworth Cove is actually one of the most finest examples of such a landform as it's almost perfectly spherical in shape and it's also a word heritage site like many areas along the Jurassic coast. I think the best way to view it is from the north where you can get a bird's eye view of the cove below. Unfortunately we didn't have time to reach this vantage point but you should definitely head up there if you have the time. Okay so we're just leaving Lulworth Cove now not quite as epic from our vantage point as we would have liked and we couldn't get the drone out just because of the laws around here on drone flying um, in this just very particular area it's um, pretty hard to see with your eyes how the cove actually looks so now we're just heading on back to the car it's about to absolutely throw it down so it's a race against time <laughs> so fingers crossed we made it but if you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing and we will see you on the next adventure in dorset Bye. bye